Hello everyone and welcome back to World of Warships Blitz with Terry. Today we are looking at something French, as you can see from the little flag waving on top of it. And it's a battleship. And it's the Flandre. This ship was, well, supposed to be um, one of the Alsace class battleships. Now, how did we get to the Alsace class? Because we haven't actually looked at the Alsace yet. Well, the French were building the Richelieu's, mainly as an answer to, well, the Italians. And then they thought they were on par with things. But then they learned, uh, to their great shock, horror and disappointment, that the Germans were uh, planning the H-class battleships. And they actually thought these were going to be a lot smaller than they were really going to be. <laughs> but they still panicked. So they looked at one of the Richelieu designs. And the Richelieu had, class actually had multiple designs, which is why we're having the Gascogne here. Excuse me, which is one of the Richelieu designs, uh, which has the more balanced layout. But there was also the Project C uh, that was that came out during the Gascogne and Clemenceau modifications of the Richelieu class, which was a more traditional layout with uh, two turrets forward, one turret aft, well, albeit with three guns each. And that never that never really happened because it was too big for the uh, for the slipways in the shipyards, because they already had problems just getting the Richelieu built because they had to build her without the front bit and then get it out into the water and then put the front on because the shipyard wasn't big enough. But uh, yeah, so the Alsace would have been even larger. And again, for the Alsace class, there were three proposals. There was the first proposal, which was effectively the Project C from the Richelieu slash Gascogne. And that's pretty much what we're seeing here. That's the uh, triple, uh, triple, three triple turret uh, traditional battleship layout setup. There was a... Um, a pro proposal number two, which was supposed to have 406 millimeter guns instead of the 380s. And there was the proposal number three, which was the biggest, which had effectively the gun layout of what we see with the Alsace in-game with, uh, what's it, four four quads or three quads? Um, let, me, let me have a quick look, actually. Uh, no, uh, th th three quad turrets, yeah. Two forward, two, two aft. The one with the four was the Lyon. Right, so... Um, did this thing get built? No, <laughs> because, uh, well, the Germans happened and then that all just became a thing. But the name Flandre is actually, was actually one of the names considered for one of the Alsace class ships. So this is the smallest of the Alsace class proposals. And uh, that's how she ended up in tier eight, actually. Because you might ask yourself, what is an Alsace class battleship doing in tier, tier eight? Well, let's have a quick look and do some comparisons here. The Flandre and the Gascogne, the actual tier 8. The first thing that stands out is that the Flandre, very unusually for a French battleship, does not get an engine boost. She also doesn't get a rapid reload, not to be fair, neither does the Alsace, but um, she does get a precise aim. But it's just a precise aim one, so not a huge amount of, uh, of ship skills here that we get. Uh, she does get more hit points, though, than the Gascogne, because it is technically an Alsace class hull, so uh, it's a bigger ship. She is a bit faster than the Gascogne as well, but uh, ever so slightly less maneuverable. She does get effectively the exact same guns on the Gascogne, so of course they take a second longer to reload. <laughs> and she doesn't get the rapid reload either. But she gets a little bit more uh, a little bit more range thrown into the mix, and of course, well, she's got nine guns instead of eight. So uh, they, they start. The secondaries are completely identical down to the auto secondaries although she does get more of the auto secondaries than the Gascogne with 14 twins rather than 8 twins so there's a bit more of that around uh, the AA is interesting in that it is very much concentrated around the large caliber AA and uh, in that actually she is significantly better than the Gascogne but in return the small caliber AA is, is um, not as good, but honestly, I'll take that because it means that your guns start opening up, your powerful guns start opening up earlier because the large caliber tends to have a longer range. She's got slightly worse concealment than the Gascogne as well. So let's do a comparison with the actual Alsace at tier 9, which, as I mentioned, is the third project, the largest of them, uh, and the Flantel was the smallest. The Alsace does not get the rapid reload, 
but um, uh, doesn't get as many hit points as the Flandre, which is very, very interesting because the Flandre was supposed to be a smaller ship, uh, effectively just an enlarged um, uh, Clemenceau or Gascogne with the different turret layout. But um, yeah, interestingly enough, uh, she gets a lot of, uh, she even gets more hit points than the Alsace still. Uh, she's faster and slightly better maneuverable, but not by a large margin. Now, that's obviously the, of course, the Alsace gets the quadruple turrets. And the French, the, the people are, um, sources aren't really clear on which ship would have been built. Because the French, while the French were good at building quadruple turrets of 380 millimeter guns, they had never built a 406 millimeter gun. And they definitely hadn't built a triple turret either of these things. So uh, people are not quite in agreement as to which one would have been the most likely of them. But yeah, um, the guns are exactly the same, only that uh, the Alsace gets more of them. And once again, the Flandre actually has slightly better range. And yeah, on the secondary arrangement, uh, she still even gets more auto secondaries than the Alsace. Although um, with a four kilometer range and they're not doing a huge amount of damage, uh, it's not something you'll be using extremely frequently. Uh, AA wise, uh, the Alsace is more powerful, but uh, slightly better concealment on the Flandre. So this is definitely a ship that is, um, it has an interestingly large hit pool and uh, seems to be set up a bit more for range. So what have we done? Equipment, uh, main battery mod three, because this is about, this is a ranged French ship. I mean, she doesn't have a huge amount of range over the other ones, but she's got a little bit more. And she's got the precise aim, so we're kind of uh, assuming that we want to play her at range a little bit more. So that's uh, that's where I got in with, with that one. Uh, I know that the uh, secondary, uh, secondary spec French battleships are actually not a terrible idea sometimes, and this one goes in there as well. So if you want to play her more broadly, because she does have more hit points than, than her contemporaries, even at tier 9, <laughs> uh, this, might, this might be worth doing. So I'm, I've, I'm definitely not shy of uh, getting into a brawl with these things. Uh, she, I, I am using the deck protection mod here instead of the instead of the propulsion mod because um, not the greatest fire flooding resistance and the steering in three. She does have a pretty good torpedo defense though. I have put a commander, a uh, level eight commander in here. Uh, nothing special because the only skill really is that you get is the precise aim. Uh, I've traded the survivalist for getting a fourth precise aim because it's only a precise aim one. It doesn't make a huge amount of difference. And uh, given that she has a relatively large hit point pool, that might be a better choice. But of course, on a French battleship, you might want to have a slightly different uh, setup. Once again, it's not perfect as a captain trainer in these sort of things. Marksman skill for more duration and most definitely the extinguisher. Okay, what else do we need to look at? Um, the uh, elite bonus, you can have an improved torpedo uh, damage reduction, which is not a terrible choice to make. So she comes with, I think, 21% out of the box. So this would get it up to 23. And um, that's almost Roma level, so torpedo defense. <laughs> not quite, but almost. Uh, or you can do what I did and just get yourself better guns, which because I like shooting stuff. <laughs> so that's what I'm going with here. Which brings us to the camouflage. Uh, you can get the historical camo, which looks uh, in typical French fashion, like the dazzle camo that you get there, uh, which is a which is a typical battleship setup, but it's actually a very good choice for her because it gives more hit points and she's got a large pool to start with. It uh, gives her better range, a better dispersion, and once again, better torpedo damage reduction. So you could do a complete torpedo damage reduction build on this thing as well and pump that up by quite a significant mar margin. That is something you could do, always depending on your playstyle. Now, um, I have been asked to look at the uh, not historical camo. So you you could effectively turn your ship into a castle and stick a great big lion in front such that your guns actually can't shoot at the enemy and uh, put a put put a tablecloth around the rear if you so desire <laughs> and hang a little banner in between your masts which gives you um, more ship hit points more battery main battery range it doesn't give you the dispersion but it gives you a uh, large color by aa which is useful and it gives you secondary battery firing range, which is also useful. So if you want to go with a secondary spec uh, French battleship, 
and you don't mind having a really, really big lion head on the sticking out the front of it, um, uh, then maybe, maybe, you know, but yeah, nah, nah. <laughs> Ooh, <laughs> sorry. <laughs> sorry. All right, but now you know. The more you know, the better. We're going to stick the Seabon Assault onto here and be done with it. All right, then. Um, anything I've forgotten? I think let's let's get into a bunch of games uh, and see how she compares to the other French and Tier 8 battleships in general, because there's a fair amount of them by now. We'll start off being bottom tier. It's a carrier game. Uh, there's a Shukaku, Izumo, North Carolina, a Torn, a Wichita, an Albemarle, and a Kagero on the enemy team. So, let's go on Domination, Typhoon's Eye. Uh, Typhoon's Eye, yeah. So, four, four capture circles. Uh, you do have a decent hit point pool, but you don't have a massive amount of armor. And you do have a decent AA, but it's not enough to defend yourself single-handedly against the carrier if they really want you dead. So uh, this is, once again, in, in typical French fashion, a ship that's all about positioning. Which means I am given the lack of destroyer on this side, and that given that that's a Massachusetts, uh, which is probably not the fastest out there, I am going to get myself into A cup. I do have a cruiser with me. So uh, together we should have a decent amount of AA. It would be great if the Massa could come along, but the carrier is giving us fight cover for the Massa, which is not sailing anywhere and just sitting there right now, so I'm not sure what this is all going to be about, but we'll see. Alright, uh, I do have a Takao with me, so that's a good thing, and uh, definitely want to give some AA cover and keep that thing alive. The, uh, we do have, I would say the Destroyer is probably in D cup, because it was capped earlier, unless, uh, unless he's taken the long way around. So anyway, we, we're going to have to be a little bit careful, we are spotted. So there's definitely something there that we can't see. This could be the Kagro. Um, it would be great if the carrier was scouting, but I think the carrier is busy on the other side. Uh, at least the Massachusetts is coming along. So I'm just sailing ahead very carefully. And I think that's probably about... Okay, there's the Albemarle. But it wasn't the Albemarle that was spotting me, I'm pretty sure. Okay, insta-double fire. Yep, <laughs> Damak on that. So I am definitely going to revert. Yeah, there's the Kagero. There come the Kagero Torps. I knew he was going to be there. Okay, let's bunk the Albemarle a little bit. Uh, we're going to take one here, but that's okay. We can heal that up. There comes the second batch, but I'm already in reverse. Ah, take another one. Okay, lucky there that it wasn't a flood. Albemarle has learned his lesson and is behind the island. But yeah, uh, Kagero is over there. Takao and uh, Masa seem to be taking the long way around, which means the North Carolina has nothing better to do than to shoot at me. Uh, but you know, you can go bow in in this ship. Uh, even though she's got... Uh, like Unlike unlike the Gasconia, she's actually got uh, two-thirds of her firepower forward. And she is reasonably precise. So uh, if we can duke a little bit from the NC shots over there and just return the favor as much as possible. Yeah, I can't love that. Um, there is still a Kagero out there somewhere, so um, I'm not sure what the Massachusetts is doing back there, but uh, the North Carolina definitely coming this way, so I'm not pushing that. Um, I think the Kagero is trying to long-range torp the NC, uh, good luck with that, uh, sorry, the, the Takao, the Kagero torp is coming in as well on the other side. They spotted early, so hopefully they can dodge that in time, but yeah, I don't think... Uh, I don't think they're going to Takao. I've spot spotted these torps miles away, and they're gonna I'm gonna run into these two. Yeah. Uh, well, um, yeah. There's a Kagro. Some it's somewhere there, or he's going back the other way. But could we please do something about him? Because the NC is on very low health. So uh, let's see if we can just finish him off very quickly before he sails away. Because I really don't want him to start recovering any hit points. Uh, there's the Albemarle. Okay, uh, Takao takes out the North Carolina. Uh, Masa, where where the heck are you going? The capture circles are over there. So yeah, we should push towards B Cup. How about that, people? <laughs> yeah, Albemarle has no interest in uh, pushing into a, a Massachusetts, a Takao, <laughs> and a French battleship. But we might be getting some loving attention from the carrier. And yeah, don't forget that the Kagro is still out there somewhere. Uh, he's not in, in A cup, that much I know, but uh, where where he is, I don't. So I do have to be careful. Oh, there he is. Okay. Uh, I should be out of top range of that thing. So the Masa has found the Kagero. Um, and the Takao doesn't want to have anything to do with that. Which is not helpful. 
I mean, he, he'd be in a good position to, to do something about the uh, uh, about the Kagro. I mean, we've sunk the Albemarle. Uh, we're two kills on two. We, we're real pretty even on points. So um, we're going to head over into B Cup because it looks like our right flank is utterly collapsing. So I do definitely... Yeah, we're, we're about to lose C Cup and the carrier is exposed. Yeah, and we've just lost the North Carolina down there. So yeah, our right flank is completely collapsing, and uh, the Massachusetts thinks that he's a light cruiser and is chasing the Kagro into the edge of the map, which uh, is great <laughs> for uh, the <laughs> for everybody. Kagro just smoked up, which means I'm alone here because the Taco has been sunk. Uh, I can get some some parting shots off at the Izumo, but now I have a problem because I'm alone against an Izumo, a Tone, and a Shokaku, <laughs> and that's not something I like doing. Well, I do need to get B cup. I, I might get be able to get shots off at the Shokaku, and I'm not sure I can sink him from here easily. It depends on how lucky I get with my citadels. Uh, that's a good start. But of course, the Shokaku is now uh, going to drop me, and my Damacon's on cooldown, so that's a perma fire. But just double for now. Now there's going to be Tone tor Torps in the water, so I'm going to have to slow down. Uh, shots out at the Tone, full, full on stop, which exposes me to dive bomber attacks from the Taka, uh, from the Shokaku, but there's nothing I can do about that. So I take those Torps, and that's where the torpedo damage reduction comes in handy. Uh, fires have burned out, yeah, there come the Tone Torps. Unfortunately, I think the... Um, okay, this Salvo needs to kill this thing, now. If this Salvo doesn't kill it, then I'm in trouble, because the Izumo is coming up behind me. Full on, full on ahead, and that salvo needs to sit. Uh, no, that wasn't enough. Okay, I think the Chokaku has just started reversing. Yeah, I'm dead. <laughs> there's, uh, there's not much I could, I can do here anymore because uh, either Izumo or, uh, or Shokaku or even Tone is going to kill me. I might be able to, to get the Shokaku, but I think the friendly carrier is just, uh, yeah. You know, carrier, if you had killed the Izumo, that would have been useful, but. Um, you're also getting rushed by a cruiser. And now the Massachusetts, after sailing around all the corners of the map and failing to have to, to sink the Kagero, is uh, relatively on his own and is now realizing that he just ran out of friends. <laughs> so while, while I have managed to kill the Shokaku and um, we have lost B Cup again, and yeah, the Massachusetts is probably now going to get torpedoed by the Kagero and it's got a Tone and an Izumo against him. So yeah, there come the Kagero Torps as predicted. So that is a very, very dead Massachusetts. Uh, yeah. So, yeah, I would say we've lost this. <laughs> the Izumo, yeah, Izumo is just going to wipe him out now. Okay. Uh, which leaves the carrier, and the carrier is being chased down by, chased down by a Wichita, which is not something you really want to be fighting against in a carrier. I mean, a Wichita is on reasonably low hit points, but uh, he's the last ship alive, and uh, it's only three seconds left, so the Wichita survives. And uh, that's that. Well, it could have been worse. <laughs> At least we still did 80,000 points of damage and 300, uh, 300 team play points for both being shot to bits, uh, shooting down airplanes and actually capturing in a French battleship. Well, uh, su su such are battles sometimes. Uh, you win, you lose, but it was an interesting fight nevertheless. And we've did done five citadels all in all. So that's not a... It's not a bad thing. I think we've done one against the Albemarle, once against the NC, uh, one, uh, two against the Shokaku, and one against the Izumo. Yeah, good guns those. So for something a little bit more entertaining, well, well not entertain entertaining, but uh, um, a little bit more positive in its outcome, let me, let me put it that way, we're in a top-tier battle. Uh, once again, it's a carrier, but it's only tier 7 this time. Ranger Colorado, Duke of York, Colorado, Asashio, and Double Akatsuki. So, and we're playing Epicenter. How much do you want to bet that um, we're going to have a devil of a time getting our hands on the Center Cup? <laughs> but it is Frozen Shelter, and Frozen Shelter has um, uh, is chock full of islands with a lot of good cover halfway across the map. So um, a lot of places where that I can use as torpedo defenses. So of course we are going to put her on full full ahead. Uh, yeah, with with the camo and with the consumable, she gets up to fifty four thousand points, uh, fifty four thousand hit points, which is a really respectable amount for a tier eight French battleship. 
And yeah, don't underestimate the AA. It's concentrated along around long range. So with an almost four kilometer range on the AA, she can do, well, she can't necessarily hold her own, but she can do a, a decent amount of things when combined with other things. Yeah, the uh, Akatsuki's have no interest whatsoever in getting anywhere near the center cup because they're being chased by the carrier, understandably so. So stick with me. I'm going to try and do what I can here. Okay, Aka, you're going to be dropped by the carrier. You may want to stop and... No, you're sailing in a straight line. Oh dear, it's one of those games, isn't it? Well, we're shooting down some of those torpedo bombers at least. Okay, so that's uh, scratch one Aka. The other one um, has run back to the friendly carrier <laughs> and is not having any of this business. Which means uh, the enemy team is now holding the center two cups. And we've got a Duke of York to play with. So I'm going to get into this position here and use that island next to me to uh, to defend myself from any torpedoes coming around from the center cup because there's absolutely no way I can um, I can go in there with double Akatsuki in there. And there comes an Asashio, so there's going to be Asashio torps in the way. So I'm going to put her in reverse already such that these are sailing harmless by in front of me. The Duke of York seems to have run into an island. Yep, that happens. <laughs> Uh, fortunately for him, my guns aren't reloaded. Uh, there, now they are, so and he's still broadsiding. Uh, as expected, the Asashio Torps are just sailing past here, and uh, we are making our way back into the middle ring to see that we can get, get that contested, because if we hold two rings, even if it's just the outer two, we are actually having a higher points income. Okay, there comes another torpedo drop that I think wasn't even meant for me. But uh, I, there's no way we can contest these. Oh, that one was meant for me. Full ahead, full ahead. <laughs> That's an Akka drop. I might be taking one or two here. Just one. <laughs> this is fine. And uh, we're getting some shots out at the Colorado. There's another Akatsuki coming in again. So once again, we need... Yeah, he's shooting at me. So he's definitely targeting me. So there are going to be drops in the water. Uh, unload at the Colorado and then switch to high explosive. There was an Asashio somewhere around here. So I'm going to slow down again. Just in case there are Sashio Torps coming my way. Uh, okay, one Akatsuki, two Akatsuki's in the center cup. Uh, we we're reloading the high explosive and inching back, just making sure that we're holding two of the circles. Uh, let's target this guy here. Fire precise aim out. And a bunch of shots, but it... Dispersion was okay, but not grand. Uh, okay, see if we can get another shot off, given that I've got the high explosive loaded. There's the other Aka. Is he turning in? I think he's turning in. So full ahead again, because he might he might be coming my way. Uh, he's turning around. He's not he's in secondary range. Okay, that's a that's a nice dispersion. Yep, that was half an Akatsuki gone. Uh, there's some torpedoes passing by, and he is in secondary range, but uh, I don't want to stick around here because there might be more to Yep, there come the Asashio Torps. I knew this were coming from that side. Alright, so we've got that dodged. And see if we can block the Asashio in the side, given that we've just currently got the high explosive loaded. Is he turning? I think he is... Okay, maybe he's not turning. Uh, of course, the moment I pull the trigger, he starts turning. <laughs> so it's only one hit. But uh, there's another Akka coming behind us. Uh, so am I going to turn my guns around? Honestly, you know what, people? You deal with these guys. I've been shooting at destroyers for the last... Uh, the last two minutes flat out. We're behind on points. We're behind on kills. We're gonna need to do some, make something happen here. Uh, I don't. I'm gonna try and contest the center cup just to check if there's one of the destroyers still in there. Uh, yes. Okay. So I, no point in me going in there. Full ahead. Carrier is coming at me. That's okay. I'm almost full hit points. Uh, no, he's not actually. He's just flying over me, giving my a gun or something to shoot at. Okay. Uh, yeah, there's the Asashio again, but he's not the one, so the other Akka sits inside the capture circle, so... Uh, yeah, there he is, and that's why, and that's half an Asashio down, and that's why I didn't want to go in there, because there comes some Asashio Torps. And the Akka Torps are probably not far behind. So, uh, I don't have time to shoot at you, Akka, right now. I'm gonna have to dodge Asashio Torps. Okay, Insta Flood, of course, I'm gonna dunk on that. And, um... Now we can do something about this Akatsuki here. Yeah, you got way too close, buddy. And uh, that's going to hurt. <laughs> All right, double fire. And uh, he got one top drop off. But I think I can just outrun that. All right. Uh, we are still behind on points. But we are ahead on kills now. And we've got a King George coming in to deal with uh, the remaining destroyers, maybe? Uh, I know that they're somewhere there. Okay, I'm just going to unload the guns in that direction just in case, and then switch over to the armor piercing, because we need to make something happen. We're 100 points behind, we're even on kills again. 
We're not going to get the center cup, uh, not that easily, not with two destroyers out there, but the uh, actually one destroyer. The other one is completely out of position and it's getting carrier dropped. So what I'm going to try in the remaining minute 35 is I'm going to try and kill the ranger because that'll give us points. And um, um, yeah, my, my you, you people are going to have to are going to have to deal with this now. I'm going to try and sink the ranger because that gives us the most points. And I've, we've still got two battleships and one destroyer which is chasing the other battleship back there. We seem to have lost our own carrier. I don't know when that happened. It was a while. It might have been a while ago. But now uh, we're going to shout very loud and make use of our 50,000 hit points and rush that range over there and the Colorado as well. Um, I don't know. Yeah, that Colorado's got, got a destroyer chasing after him. The other two destroyers are here. And uh, I just need to kill that ranger before the timer runs out. And that should get us ahead on points given that we have a higher points income than the enemy team. Although now all the three cups are flipping. So uh, this thing gets reshuffled. Our battleships have managed to, get, to capture the center. Our destroyer takes out uh, takes out the Colorado. We got the Nagato killed and suddenly the whole battle has turned around. Okay, and we're ahead on points. Uh, Nagato is on decent health. I'm on full health and uh, if he's, Nagato isn't running into into a full torpedo spread then uh, then we're not we're, we're gonna win this. Okay, we got a couple more plane kills, and we're capturing some more capture points. But all in all, good job, my friends. Good job. That was a close one, and we're just about over 50 points ahead. We are winning this game on points. <laughs> oh, some torpedo dodging involved here today. All right. Uh, yeah. So in summary, the uh, the Flandre is a good ship. That honestly. Um, I like the precision on these guns. Uh, as you've seen, the 380s at close to mid-range are very, very punchy. French, French guns, good French guns, and uh, she's got uh, she's got a good set of secondaries to defend herself with as well. Uh, can definitely brawl if she needs to occasionally, but uh, obviously not the armor to to sustain that or to come under concentrated fire. But uh, fast ship. A good addition, not overpowered, not not underpowered. It's a pretty balanced tier eight battleship, and um, one that I would personally happily play. Of course, if you don't want to spend money, you can get yourself the Project C, the actual Gascogne, for free, which is also a pretty good ship. So you know, there's something for everybody. Anyway, that's it for today. Thanks everybody, and I'll see you next time. Bye bye.